This is part two of the lecture entitled Linear Systems and Their Diagonalization. Here we're going to look at uh, the basic concepts of linearity, nonlinearity, and linear shift invariance, or LSI systems. So basics of linearity, uh, if we've got some linear mapping uh, y of x here, if we were to plug in some value x1 as the independent uh, uh, variable, the input value x1, we're going to map it through a linear function and get some output value y1. Now if we scale that by some scalar a, so we get a x1, then because it's a linear system, we'll simply be getting a y1 in the output. In other words, we could just take the output from x1 and just scale that, and that gives us uh, predictably what the output would be for a times the input x1. If we were to put in a different input, x2, plug that in, we'd get some output y2. Now with a linear system, if we add together x1 to x2 and plug that in, what we get at the output is simply the sum of the outputs from when we just put in x1 and x2 in separately. Okay, So we just get predictably y1 plus y2 from the output when we put x1 and x2 at the input. So that should all be hopefully quite straightforward to you. Um, now, of course, we can extend that to the context of uh, vectors. So now imagine we've got some vector uh, x1 representing some brain image here, for example. If I put it through my linear mapping here, I'm just using a, a convolution, just a simple smoothing process. I'm going to get some blurred output y1. If I were to put image x2, um, in. So you've got to consider this x-axis, by the way, as, as, a, as a kind of a direction in a very high dimensional vector space. And I'm just giving examples x1 and x2 as obviously these are very high dimensional vectors and they're just two points um, in that vector space. Now if I put in x2, plug it into my linear mapping, I'm going to get some output uh, y2. And because it's a linear system here, if I now add together x1 to x2, so this is just the combination of this Shep Logan phantom with this brain web phantom. If I put them in together into my linear mapping, what do I get at the output? Well, the output is just the same as adding together the outputs from the individual inputs. In other words, I just add together y1 to y2, and that predictably gives me the output from when I put in both inputs simultaneously. So hopefully, uh, this is all fairly straightforward. It's what we would expect um, from a linear system. And it often, intuitively, we expect this of most systems. Although it certainly isn't always the case. And it's an assumption we make that's um, often well respected by uh, systems, but not perfectly. So perhaps uh, it's more instructive then to look at what would happen with a non-linear mapping. So here I'm now showing, rather than a linear mapping, I'm showing um, a kind of a, a thresholding function here where uh, you should imagine this red line goes from minus infinity all the way up to some position here in this vector space. And then I'm just getting this um, linear response from that point onwards. So um, what I'm doing here in this mapping is doing a, a convolution and then I'm doing a threshold and setting all values to zero below some value um, in the output image. And so that's why when I use the Shep Logan Phantom, when I first of all blur it with a linear mapping and then do that thresholding process, which uh, amounts to a non-linearity, I'm getting some output like this. And by the way, I've used this example because it is very relevant in the context of machine learning and deep learning where they use um, convolutions followed by activation functions. They often do convolutions and then do an additive offset, positive or negative, and then do an activation function. And that activation function is what gives us the non-linearity in uh, deep or machine-learned uh, mappings. So here I'm just giving that, uh, that's the motivation for this choice of non-linearity. Anyway, so if I put this image in, if I smooth it and then threshold, I would get a result like this. Now, um, if I put in a separate, if I put in a different input image, x2, plug that one in, here that just gets, uh, again, smoothed and then thresholded, I might get an output that looks like y2. So far, so good. Um, if you like, this is a little bit like what we saw on the previous slide. We put an input in and we get some output. However, where it now differs is that this is no longer a linear mapping, 
um, as evidenced by the following. If I now add together those two images, so if I take X1 and X2, add them together, I get this kind of hybrid phantom result here by adding together the brain web phantom to the Shep Logan phantom, put those in together, um, so I do my convolution and I do my threshold, then the output here uh, is no longer um, equal to the sum of these two outputs, okay? It's not a linear system. You can see it's not the same because if you look here in what would have been the white matter here, that was thresholded and set to zero. There was also nothing present here. And yet in this output, we do see a signal. That's because adding together those two signals um, with the convolution following that, um, it then lifted those values above that threshold. And so they survived the overall mapping. Whereas when you put them in separately, um, air, you know, pixels in that region there and that region there just never made it through this non-linearity. So it's good to be clear on what we mean by a linear mapping and a non-linear mapping in the context of medical imaging systems. So linearity, very simple concept. We've just given, given examples of this already. So some function uh, one going into the input of the mapping gives some output, some function f2 as an input gives some uh, function f out, um, uh, superscript 2 in brackets to denote that output. Um, and then as we've seen, if we sum them together, if we put them in uh, simultaneously into our scanner, then the output is predictably just the sum of the two individual outputs. Um, also with linearity, we can arbitrarily weight each of those input um, images, for example. And then the output would be um, those previous two output functions, but with the respective scaling factors of the inputs. Um, and then extending that even further, we could add together capital J different images with different weighting factors, W1, W2, and so on up to W capital J. And then the output predictably would just be um, equal to the sum of all the individual outputs with the respective weighting factors that we applied at the input as well. So succinctly then, that would be saying for a linear um, system, we could just add together a weighted collection of input functions and the output of a linear system would just be the same weighting factors for all of the individual outputs just added together. So this is really, again, intuitively what we would naturally expect of a system, but not true for nonlinear systems. Okay, so that's linearity and non-linearity in the context of imaging. Um, shift invariance, worth mentioning as well, because we will be considering a bit of LSI um, convolution mappings. Um, if we've got a linear system, we've just seen um, this very simple, trivial um, mapping occurs here, whereby we could individually um, weight these two inputs and then that the output of the linear system would just be the weighted combination of the individual outputs. That's just what a linear system does. But now if we're going to say it's linear shift invariant, uh, the difference now is that uh, this input function, weighted by some amount w1, if we were to shift it um, by an amount x1, then the output um, would be correspondingly shifted by an amount x1 as well. Now here, to be crystal clear, um, the x that I'm using here is a spatial coordinate, okay? So think of these as one-dimensional uh, functions in space. So imagine f of x as some radioactive concentration f as a function of position independent variable x. And uh, so that's, that's the difference here compared to the earlier slides when I was just dealing with vectors here I'm now focusing on 1D functions just to convey this simple concept of shift invariance. So now I'm saying that this um, function f of x shifted by x1 um, with weighting factor w1, when we pass it through our linear mapping, um, we'll get the output that we would have obtained had it not been shifted, but then correspondingly shifted to where we had shifted the input function. And likewise for another input f in 2, as a function of x, if we shifted that to position x2 and weighted it by a value w2, then at the output we'd get the same weighting factor of f out 2, where f out 2, as you can see, is just the output from when we present the input independently to the system. Uh, it's the same output, but just also weighted by w2 and also just shifted by an amount x2. 
So that's saying it doesn't matter where we shift those inputs to in the field of view of the scanner, we're getting the same output but correspondingly shifted. So hopefully this will become even clearer in the following slides because this is easier to understand um, in the context of 2D imaging. But just first to finish off this 1D example, so we're saying we could have capital J different input functions variously shifted by amounts xj and variously weighted by weighting factors wj, put them through our LSI, linear shift invariant system, and the, what we get is the outputs. Again, remember these are just the individual outputs when the input is presented by itself. Um, they're also shifted by the same amounts xj and weighted by the same amounts wj. Okay, let's make it even clearer now with a 2D example. This should really remove any lingering doubt. So here is an input function. So here it's a 2D space example. So you could imagine parentheses x comma y here now for these uh, functions. So some input function in 2D uh, goes to some output function. So here I'm using the example of a point source in a scanner. Or if you want to think of something simpler, imagine it as a, as a camera taking a photograph of a night sky with just a star in the middle of the field of view of the camera. Then when we run it through our system here, this would indicate a pretty bad quality camera where a, a night sky star has gone through our system and resulted in a blurred photograph of that star. Or if this was a, a reconstruction system or something, um, then this would be a, a point spread function that is not particularly sharp. Now, if it's a linear shift invariant system that we're dealing with here, then if we shift this input point source, or again, if it's a star in the night sky, if we consider the star in a different position in the field of view of our scanner, here I'm showing it displaced by minus 64 in the x direction and plus 64 in the y direction. If we run that through our imaging device, then guess what? We get an identical point spread function, but just correspondingly shifted to where the input had been shifted. So notice that function looks the same as that function, but because the input had been displaced by an amount, say, x1 and an amount x2, here it was, as you know, 64-64 uh, displacement, um, therefore we get exactly the same um, shift in the output. And it doesn't matter wherever we move that point source around inside the field of view of the scanner, if this is an LSI, linear shift invariant system, then this response will look identical everywhere in the output. And of course, this is a linear system, so very trivially, I could also just incidentally add together these two point sources or these two stars in the night sky. And then when I run it through my linear shift invariant system, the output predictably is just the sum of the individual outputs. That, of course, is a hallmark of a linear system. Um, now, remember those scaling factors W, um, W1, W2, up to WJ. Um, this is just showing that in the context of a 2D imaging system now. Um, so that's what this homogeneity is referring to, where I could use that scaling. I think in the very early slide, I used the scale factor A, and then later on, I'm using a scaling or a weighting factor W. So here I'm using a weighting factor of 0.2. In other words, I've just diminished the intensity of that star in the night sky. Imagine it was some weak, uh, less intense star in the night sky. Or if it's a PET scanner, think of this as a, as a point source of activity that's only got 20% of the radioactive concentration of the point source in the previous slide. Then when I run that through my linear shift invariant system, guess what? I just get the same output that I had before but correspondingly scaled down by that amount of 0.2. So again, very predictable. Uh, here I've just shown that shifted position without the scale factors. This is one times input two, but just um, shifted. And again, the PSF stays the same. And because this is a linear system, if I present that 0.2 intensity star or that 0.2 intensity point source at the same time as the full intensity point source, but located at that position there, LSI system, means predictably the output, first of all, the PSF is the same function, but the PSF here is just scaled down by that amount uh, 0.2, okay, which is what we saw up here. And here the PSF is just the same, um, but um, obviously located at the position of that input point source. So hopefully the concept here of linear shift invariance 
um, is quite straightforward. Um, now, it's worth finishing this section just by pointing out what linear shift variant would be. Um, so if the star in the night sky or the point source was in the middle there, I might get some PSF that looks like what we saw before in the middle of the photograph or in the middle of my um, processed uh, reconstructed image, for example. Um, if now the point source or the star in the night sky had been in a different position, here I've got a linear shift variant system because notice that now with the point source or the star over there, I'm getting a different shape, a different function for my point spread function. Okay, It's no longer the compact size of that. We've got some serious spatial resolution degradation here. This is just exaggerated for effect because it can happen, um, but just exaggerated here for clarity. Uh, but even though it's linear, even though it's shift variant, it is still a linear system, which means that had we presented both of those inputs simultaneously to this system and put them through, then the output is none other than the sum of those individual outputs previously seen with independent presentation of those input functions. So that's all I wanted to say on linearity, nonlinearity, and linear shift invariance. These are very basic concepts, but I hope that those few slides have really uh, consolidated your understanding of those crucial concepts. In the next uh, lecture in this, or the next part of this lecture, I want to go into positron emission tomography, basics of data acquisition, back projection, sinograms, list mode data, and then showing how we can use convolution as a very simple model for back projected images. Thanks for listening.